What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you 5 tips and tricks about creating curtain walls in Revit. So it's one of those things that's kind of easy to make but there's a lot to learn and to, to kind of master this uh, curtain wall tool. But anyway, before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day. And follow me on social media if you uh, model something I model in Revit or you've got some projects, you can share them with me and I'll feature them on my social media. But anyway, let's get started with this. So I'm just going to start the architectural template so you know I'm just starting off from the beginning and the tip or trick number one is to pick the right curtain wall for your project. So when you open up this here drop menu and choose wall command or of course you can use the WA tool for wall and uh, you open up the drop menu you've got uh, three types of curtain walls so let's just place all of them so let's do one over here then go for exterior glazing and finally let's go with storefront so once you've done this and now you go into 3d as you can see they they are quite different so what's the difference here uh well as you can see uh, this one the curtain wall the like the basic one doesn't really have any of the any of these separations here uh, any any curtain grid it doesn't have anything so this is really something that you would use in a conceptual phase or if you're just trying to create a uh, just a basic window uh, or something like that or maybe you want to edit the profile and then uh, edit it in some weird shape or I don't know so if you're doing something like that uh, then I, I suggest you use this but if you're creating anything more complex I suggest you go with this uh, curtain wall storefront uh, because it has all of the ma uh, mullions already uh, loaded in so it's uh, a bit easier to use there is uh, really no changes to be made you can just use this out of the box and then uh, in the middle we've got this exterior glazing which is kind of a weird one uh, because it's still just glass but you've got these separations so you can load this in if you want to load in uh, the mullions manually uh, but I don't see the point of that so I either go with this if I'm just in some conceptual uh, design or I'm just using the curtain wall tool uh, just to create the appearance of a window and if I'm doing a real curtain wall then I would go with something like this because it's uh, very realistic Okay, moving on to the second tip, and that's adjusting the mullion size as well as uh, uh, this uh, this grid. So how do you do that? Well, when you select your uh, curtain wall, uh, you can go in into the edit type dialog, and here you can change the spacing for the vertical grid as well as for the horizontal grid. So I'm just going to change the vertical grid to 900 millimeters because we're going to be placing some doors later on but anyway that's uh, that's how you make those changes for the size uh, now if you go here into edit type you can also change the mullions so if I go here you've got interior type for uh, uh, we've got these two sections so we've got vertical mullions and horizontal mullions and if you don't know uh, mullions are these kind of structural elements that are holding the glass in place so you've got the interior type so those are well all of the on the interior and then you've got the border type 1 and border type 2 those are these here on the border now the, the reason for two types I guess it calculates something different for different types but uh, for what we're doing here uh, that doesn't matter you can just go here and you can change so let's change the interior one to 30 millimeters square uh, and do the same thing over here hit apply okay and as you can see now the outside is this thick mullion and the inside is this 10 30 millimeter uh, mullion so you can make changes like that or alternatively you can go in and maybe go into level one and you can select just one mullion and if you uh, unpin it uh, you can actually move it around and you can go in and you can actually select just the, the the mullion unpin it and then you can change it to maybe 25 millimeter like this the round one so you can go and independently change each one uh, so as you can see this one here is changed right now uh, so you can do that or you can do uh, into the edit type dialog when you select everything and then make changes here 
Okay, moving on to the next step, and that's how to place a single door on a curtain wall. So if I go here into level 1 and I want to place a door, I go to the door command and I can't do it. Come on. Okay, so why is this? So uh, basically these uh, curtain walls don't work as regular walls, so you can't just place a door on them, uh, but you need to add a special door or load it in. So how do you do that? Well, you go to the insert tab, you go to load family, and here uh, at doors, and if you can find doors, uh, you should go here to libraries. I use metric, but you can use imperial if that's what you use. Then you go to doors, and then here you've got a bunch of doors. So let's load this one in, uh, like the door, curtain wall, single glass. So as you can see, uh, only the first three say curtain wall, so those are the ones to use for curtain walls. So let's uh, load this one in, open it up, and how do you now place it? If you go to doors, it's not there, uh, it's not loaded with the doors. So it's actually a curtain wall panel. So if I'm here in the floor plan and I hover over the curtain wall and hit the tab key once, I can select just the panel, unpin it, and then I can change it. Uh, I can change it to empty or I can change it to solid, but what I'm going to choose is this M door, curtain wall, single glass, so we've got our door. And you can flip it around, you can change it, just like you would a regular door. And if you want to change the size, you would have to go here, select the grid, unpin it, and then uh, you would have to move the grid. But that's just not something I'm going to do for this one. Okay, now let's go into 3D. And as you can see, we can't figure out where is our curtain door. So how do you do that? How do you make it appear? So you go here to the uh, to this uh, detail level and you set it to fine and now this door handle will appear. Will appear. So it only appears uh, when your detail level is set to fine. If you're at coarse or medium, uh, you can see it. Well, you can kind of see it. It's a bit different than this one, but uh, it's really hard to notice. So I suggest you keep this at fine. Okay, so that's for one door, but what if you want to have a double door? Well, uh, it's a bit different again, so let's place a door over here, but this is two pieces of glass, not one. Uh, so how do you make that change? Well, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, hit the tab key a couple of times, unpin this, uh, this mullion and delete it. And now we only have this hole between, uh, as you can see, this hole or ridge between these two Panel, glass panels and you just select this grid as you can see it's kind of a uh, dashed line and you go here to add remove segments and you select it again and as you can see now the hole is gone and if I hit tab a few times this is now one single uh, piece of glass so I go to insert again load family and let's choose the double door open it up and you go over here you hit the tab key and you select uh, or you select the panel, you unpin it, and then you choose uh, the double door. There you go. And now we have our double door on our uh, curtain panel. Okay, so that looks really cool. Okay, so that's for the double door, and now let's move on to the tip number five and the last step, and that's how to create custom edge mullions. So uh, sometimes a, a, the curtain wall is going to look just like this, but what if you have uh, a, a corner? So let's go to architecture, and uh, let's do storefront, and let's go with something like that. So if I zoom in over here, you, s you see we've got corners, but they're not really... Uh, um, Revit doesn't really solve these corners, it just leaves two mullions kind of one over the other and it just doesn't look right and it's, well, it's wrong. So how do you fix that? Well, what you need to do is you need to zoom in and uh, select one mullion, you select the second one, so you just hold the, uh, hold the control, so you select the second mullion, then you go up, and here again you select this mullion, you select the second one, you go all the way up, you select one mullion, you select the second one, and now you just go in and unpin all of these. So you just unpin, 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 unpin. Okay, there you go. So they're all unpinned. And let's leave this area over here so you'll see why. Anyway, so now you open up the drop menu here in the properties panel once everything is selected and unpinned. And here you've got these... Uh, You've got this trapezoid uh, mullion as well as the V mullion. So these are the corner mullions you can use. Uh, so I'm just going to choose uh, the V mullion for this one. And as you can see, it's got this 
warning because it uh, it basically does this double but uh, you you delete one part so as you can see now this is one corner part mullion and you can change it maybe to the trapezoid mullion and this is what that will look like so that's how you set up all of your uh, corner mullions to make everything look uh, correct and well thought through Okay, so those were my top five tips and tricks on how to figure out uh, curtain walls in Revit and how to improve them and enhance them. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. And for all of my Patreons on Patreon, uh, or patrons on Patreon, I will be uploading a bunch of these uh, curtain wall uh, door families that they have on my computer. So that's something that's going to be useful to use. And if you want to check that out, check out my Patreon, where for only $5 a month, you can get access to all of my Revit project files, over 150 or 160 Revit files so far. But anyway, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe like and share this video and if you have any questions comments or suggestions make sure to leave them in the comment section below thank you for watching and have a nice day